I'm going to start tonight on the basis of a question, not from the people of Palestine themselves, but from the people who are watching the people of Gaza. There are a few people that have asked the question, where is Allah, where is God in all of this? I'm going to start with what the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him mentioned at the coming out of Yajuj Majuj, this corrupt group of people that overtake the earth in its last days, and as they come out and wreak havoc on every single part of the earth except where Allah has shielded Hazrat Isa and his righteous followers, and Yajuj Majuj have come to this earth, and they kill everything that is in sight with absolutely no mercy in their intoxication with their arrogance and their oppression they say to each other we've already killed everyone on the earth let's kill everyone in the heavens and the prophet muhammad peace be upon him says in the hadith of yabur which is authentic that they were throw their arrows to the sky at the same time and allah could have simply turned the arrows on them and that the arrows hit them back what did the prophet muhammad Peace be upon him, say Allah, does Allah causes the arrows to return to them with blood, so that for a moment they can think we succeeded, we've killed everyone on earth, and now we killed everyone in the heavens too. But look at the immediacy of how this interaction with the heavens is happening. In those days, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that Allah will then send a parasite which is a particular parasite that would be in the noses of sheep and that would kill them, they would all be wiped out by it, Hazrat Isa, and the believers would send someone out who fears no one, but allow to see what has happened, and he would find that all of them have died at one time, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said Allah would send birds with necks like the neck of camels, I would pick them up because their rotting corpses would stink the earth would pick them up and throw them all into a pit and then Hazrat Isa peace be upon him would look to the skies and he would ask Allah to send down rain to clean the earth from what is left over of them from the stench from the dirt of them and Allah would send a rain the immediacy between the dua of Hazrat Isa, peace be upon him, to the heavens, to Allah, and the heavens, the response coming from the heavens, to the earth, the rain comes down by Allah's permission, and it cleans the earth, and it would be said to the earth, let your fruits come out, hmm? that the barakah, let the blessing of the earth be restored, and the earth produces by the permission of Allah blessing like we have never seen before, fruits that we have never seen before the immediacy in those last days, so felt and perceived both with the oppressor as well as the righteous, they call Allah responds right away, dear brothers and sisters, I bring it to Gaza, when you see Benjamin Netanyahu and their defense ministers speak with such pride, speak with such confidence and arrogance, think that they can exact all sorts of punishment on the believers with no consequences using the ayat of Allah to try to mock the people of Gaza and mock the rest of us by extension. Know that their end is near no that Allah is giving us a sign that this is the beginning of the end for them, that when you reach that point where you start to think that you've become immune and that you can mock the believers with their scripture and that you can quote your own twisted scripture and turn the believers into less than animals and think that you can descend your pamphlets of ayat of Quran and mock the believers no, that Allah is bringing you to your breaking point. This is a glad tidings for us. I know it hurts us when we see them, but if you read history, we've seen this episode before. We've seen these arrogant tyrants before they never remain on their pulpit. Not only is this genocide not going to continue and end up with a whole bunch of people in heaven, whole bunch of people from Gaza and heaven, and a whole bunch of renewed people, renewed Muslims, 
and people whose eyes are opening up to Islam, but it will end up with the humiliation of those who seek to humiliate. And when you start to ask where is Allah in all of this, the very first time that Allah mentions the patient in the Quran, when you're reading of Surah al-Baqarah, Allah is with the patience is the next time that you come across the verse about the patient give glad tidings to the patient before Allah says that the victory of Allah is close. Allah says, when my servant asks you, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, concerning me I am closed before we get to the specifics of the ending of the episodes. We get to the specifics of what moves the characters, what moves the people themselves, because what is in the people of Gaza is nothing short of majestic. And I want to be extremely clear here. You've seen the videos of the people of Gaza. How many times are they asking where is Allah? How many times are they questioning Allah despite being subjected to the worst of cruelty? You have more people living in the comfort of their homes in some of the most developed cities in Europe that are questioning God's existence and questioning God's wisdom and people who are being subjected to the, the worst of human cruelty. Why do you think that is? Do you think they're deluded? Or do you think they have something that if you don't have it, you don't understand that Allah has given them something? Now here's the other side of that the people of Gaza are not asking where is Allah, but they are asking where are you? They are asking where are the rulers of the Muslims? They are asking where is this so-called Ahmad of two billion people? They are asking where is this political and military and economic strength that you supposedly have? They are asking where, where are these people that supposedly love Mosque Al-Aqsa? and that follow a prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, whose first was Qibla Mosque Kalaksa. They're asking where you are. They're not asking where Allah is. They're asking where the leaders are. They're not asking where the Creator is. They understand that Allah has tested them in a mighty moment, and they have a direct connection with Allah. They perceive Allah under the air strikes. They perceive Allah through the hunger. They perceive Allah through the terrors as they bury their loved ones. They perceive Allah even as they see the most beloved of people to them torn up into different limbs. They perceive the presence of Allah, but they feel the absence of the Amat. Allah will gather us, and Allah will say, Where were you? And it's something that should move all of our hearts right now to ask ourselves, are we doing the best that we can? But they're not asking, where is Allah? You have to ask yourself, do you believe in Allah? And do you believe in what you are seeing as a sign from Allah and His presence rather than His absence? Which is what everybody else is trying to tell us. Are you seeing Allah present in the strengths of the people of Gaza? Or are you seeing absence in the supposed strength of the oppressor? That's a you issue to sort of refocus your iman and go back to your heart. Have you put yourself already in that situation where I will not be deceived by the destruction in front of me? Instead, I will be inspired by the faith and the resilience in front of me, I refuse to see broken buildings. Instead, I see unbreakable people that know where Allah is, that aren't questioning Allah. Allah's victory is close, and that Allah will show us His promise, and that Allah who told us through the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that of the signs of the Day of Judgment, His mouth Kalaksa, that the area of will be established, we believe, that as much as we believe that a house is being built when we see the bricks already being put together because we trust Allah.